Good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here tonight. My name's Scott Schenerlein. I'm the, how are you, Daniel? It's good to see you. Thanks for being here. Now I'm lost what I was gonna say. My name's Scott Schenerlein, the Executive Director of Wheeling Heritage. Thank you for being here tonight for our show of hands event here in September. This is a great way to help small businesses in our community and uh, we couldn't be more proud to put it on. Um, I have a lot of thank yous, so if you'll bear with me for a minute. First, I'd like to thank the Wheeling Heritage Board of Directors. They're always so supportive of everything we do in the community and they give a lot of their time and so I just wanna make sure that we thank them. Uh, I also would be remiss if I didn't thank the staff here at Wheeling Heritage, especially Alex Panis, who uh, does this programming for us and she puts a lot of effort into this, and so I just want to make sure we thank her. Thanks, Alex. We're doing something a little bit different tonight, too, and I'm sure Alex will hit on it later, but um, you can vote online tonight, which is a really a, a fun thing, and so uh, that's a new piece that we've added back in. I think we did it once during COVID uh, when we were live, but we're happy to add that back in. I wanted to thank Auric. They are our corporate sponsor for this event, and they have been for many years. And their support to us in many, many ways is so very valuable to us at Willing Heritage. So I don't know if Will is here, but I, I thank him. Uh, he snuck in the office the other day and really appreciative of everything that Auric does, not only for us, but for our community. So could you give Auric a round of applause? Thank you. We have a list of our friends of Show of Hands. And I just want to make sure I acknowledge all of them and then you can please give them a round of applause at the end. But I'd like to acknowledge Wheeling Volkswagen and Subaru, Joseph Orthodontics, Touchstone Research Laboratory, Fuzz and Barb LaRue, H. Lawrence Jones, Kennan and Kennan Realtors, Warwood Armature, Rabbi Joshua and Rebecca Leaf, Sakura Montessori, Bridgeway Capital, Sklavonakis Law Office, Will and Tracy Torini, and an anonymous donor. Please give them a round of applause for their support of this program. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over to Alex tonight so she can get the program started, but thank you again so much for being here. Your support means so much to the revitalization of downtown Wheeling. And I've been telling everybody, my new slogan is bet on Wheeling because we're going places. The streetscape's coming, things are happening, it's moving, so make sure you place your bet on wheeling. It's, it's gonna happen, it's happening in front of us, and thanks for being a part of that tonight. Hello, and welcome to Show of Hands. How's everyone doing tonight? Well, welcome back. This is our last show of hands of the season, and we're so excited to see such a great turnout because the more people that come through the doors and the more people that vote online, the more money that gets to go towards one of these amazing local businesses here in Wheeling. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being here tonight. Um, I just want to reiterate a little bit of what Scott said. I really want to thank our show of hands committee, our volunteers who have helped put this event on, um, and especially our in-house team. We've added so many unique features to this event. Um, the Wheeling Heritage Media team produced some amazing videos that will be given to these businesses um, after the event to use for their own marketing purposes, which is an invaluable asset. Um, Tonight we're live streaming, which is helping to reach new audiences who can't be with us here tonight. So really excited at all the progress and how this event continues to grow. And again, thank you all for being here. Um, let's get started by asking my favorite question by a show of hands. How many people have been to a show of hands event before? All right, good crowd, good crowd. How many people are here for the very first time? Excellent. Well, welcome. I hope you continue to come back time after time, and I hope everyone brings a friend with them so we can double in size next time and give away a buttload of money to whoever wins. So um, let's go over, since we have some new people here tonight, um, let's go over this um, order of operations. Um, as you know, we'll be listening to four presentations tonight by local businesses. They will be given four minutes to give a presentation, and then after they wrap up, um, you, the audience will have a chance to ask a couple of questions before moving on to our next presenter. 
Um, we ask, um, I know some of you might have an idea in mind of who you want to vote for, but please wait until all the presentations are over, until you check your ballot and drop it off, because you never know um, what you might be convinced of through the night. Um, for our people who are live streaming at home, I noticed that we received some early donations for votes, um, which isn't a bad thing, but we will be sending you an email, so be looking for an email in your inbox in the next 15 minutes with some special instructions for everyone else who's live streaming. The voting will be live at 6.45. You'll see some boxes populate on the side of your screen, so um, be looking for that if you're tuning in from home. All right. so. Last reminder, if there's anyone here tonight who's part of a community organization, a nonprofit, if you're a business that has something cool going on, please, please, please sign up for a community announcement. For an additional $5 donation, you get a minute uh, um, up here on stage after the presentations are over to talk about what you have going on. It's one of my favorite parts of the event, among many other things, because it's a great opportunity for everyone here to learn about what's going on across the city, not just here with Wheeling Heritage. So um, please sign up for that. Those are on each of the tables where you checked in. All right. I think I got through all the business, so let's get to our first presenter. We're going to watch a video of uh, the Pine Room team um, who um, operate the Pine Room podcast, and Brian Campbell will be representing them tonight. Can you guys hear me? Good? All right, beautiful. Good to go? All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Brian Campbell, and this is Jub Delbrug. We are extremely excited to be up here representing the Pine Room Studios. First off, we wanted to thank the Wheeling Heritage for giving us the opportunity to be a part of something so special. Tonight, we are excited to tell everyone what we've been up to and what our plans are moving forward. What started out as an idea sitting around a campfire has slowly turned into a multimedia production company. Not only are we releasing multiple podcasts each week, but we currently have a radio show that is aired on a local station every Monday. We've also had the opportunity to do multiple live shows at local businesses around the area, highlighting big events over the last six months. With everything our company has been able to do in a short amount of time, we truly believe we have the chance to leave a long-lasting positive impact on this community. Hi everyone, uh, like Brian said, my name is Jub. I'm a graduate from West Liberty University. I have a degree in graphic design, but I specifically uh, specialize in branding. Uh, I'm the creative director and executive producer for the Pine Room Studios, and I do everything that surrounds building the actual brand. That means designing brand logos and graphic elements, uh, creating content for social media, recording, editing, and directing video and audio. I produce our radio show, create and design apparel, and manage our shop and website. 
I also research analytics, and most importantly, I spec equipment, seeing what's needed for our company, what isn't, what is essential to making a quality product, and what is not. I don't have any children, at least I don't think I do. Um, so this project has been my baby, and I, uh, if anybody knows exactly what it means to create a quality product from this, it's me. I put my degree to work uh, in building the Pine Room brand from the floor up about eight months ago. But the question is, what do we need now? Uh, the average human attention span is only 8.25 seconds. So I guarantee I, I've lost some of you already. But the point is, without high quality production, we can't gather the attention that we need and bring in a bigger crowd. So if we happen to win the grand prize tonight, that would go directly into building the quality of our production. So improved cameras. Adding an additional camera to our set would allow for uh, dynamic video and on-the-go videography. Studio-grade speakers like the ones you see here. Like Brian mentioned, we're doing live in-person events around Wheeling from restaurants and other venues. And to do that, we need speakers. Live, large, in-person speakers are a must-have for a quality show. In studio-grade lighting, not only will that allow us to professionally light our set in studio, but it will also allow us to run, cut, and produce cinematic-level advertisements to all the businesses that we directly work with. At the end of the day, the better quality we can create, the more crowd we can bring in, and the bigger following we can build. And the bigger following we can build, the more attention we bring to not only us, but the businesses that we directly work with and will work with in the future. When we first started our LLC, our conversations were based around how do we get started? What do we put out and when do we put it out? As soon as we got this thing off the ground, our conversations immediately were geared towards what more can we do? And of course, right now we're, we're excited and we're happy with everything we can do, but we know we can do more and we can go much larger. With your guys' support tonight, we can get all this equipment we need to leave a longer lasting, bigger impact on this community. It's in our full intention to leave this place better than we found it. And by doing that, we believe that we can start full-time internships and full-time work experience for the local high schools and universities around this area. This place means the world to us. We have a great opportunity to give these kids chances at marketing, sales, management, digital media, things that when we were 18 years old, if we had a chance to do that, that would have changed the world for us. We have a great opportunity to give back and with everyone's support tonight, if we could get your vote, we believe we're going to do a great chance. Thank you, guys. All right. We have some time for questions and answers. So, guys, don't get too far away. Questions and answers. Yeah. All right. Just raise your hand. We have a couple of volunteers walking around. We have one back here. Hello guys, I'm a college student at West Liberty University. Have you worked with any local college students yet? We haven't worked with college students yet, but we actually, this, uh, actually this past weekend, we hired a young man in the uh, radio and TV program at Wheeling Park. Uh, he came and worked for us, uh, recording some videography for us. So we're looking to expand that. Uh, we reached out to a, to a few universities and a few high schools. So we're looking forward to uh, working with people and taking the load off of me. I know that I, I it, it, you know, I'm starting to go gray with all the stuff that I'm doing. So if I can have a little bit of help, it's going to be great. And it's going to be great to give opportunities to, to, to kids around the area. Yeah. Hi. Um, quick question, because I saw some advertising already in some of your videos that you had there. Specifically, how much of an impact would this amount of money and the support actually make towards the improvement of the operations that you already have ongoing? Yeah, that's, that's an awesome question, because that's going to give us the opportunity to get our production equipment we need, bigger microphones, bigger cameras, better lighting. So when we go to these events, we have a great opportunity to give back. We honestly take a lot of pride in every single sponsor we've had, whether as a sponsor on our podcast or a live show opportunity, they've had a successful return on investment. And that's something that we're really, really proud of, that any time that they come in and, and, and they ask us to come in and give a good product, we're able to leave it better than we found it. And, and being able to get bigger and better things would be able to give us back to the community even more. Yeah, and I think uh, along with that, uh, with, with uh, better equipment, we're going to be able to do a lot more stuff and a lot more stuff that I think will draw a lot of eyes and, 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 and 
a bigger breadth of things that we're able to do now. So I think it will allow for more opportunities to work with businesses around the area. Marketing company, what are you? So we're a, we're a, we're a multimedia production company. So we do, mean? so, uh, uh, good question. So we do all sorts of stuff. So we do a, right now we are, we have two podcasts right now. So if you're not aware of what a podcast are, it's, we're bringing guests on. We sit down, we highlight people. We, we've highlighted Coach Crutchfield, uh, Michael Grove, uh, who plays for the Dodgers. We sit around, we talk to um, owners of different businesses. We talk to Enzio Figaretti, who, who is a uh, general manager at, at uh, Figaretti's. Uh, basically, we're trying to do more stuff around the area, highlight things going on around the area, events, locations, people, all sorts of stuff. So we've got a bunch of different stuff in our, in our uh, arsenal. Yeah. 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 How do you make money? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. So right now it's directly through sponsorships. So uh, sponsorships, endorsements, uh, we highlight people, highlight places. Uh, and if those people want to come on our show and promote a product, promote a place, we're glad enough to work with them and they, they will throw us a bone in, in return. And we, we promote their product in their location. So marketing slash advertising. Yeah, somewhat, yeah. I think, just to add to that real quick, I think a good example for people to truly understand in here, so Figaretti is an Italian restaurant in Wheeling. Um, we've interviewed some big athletes that are professional athletes right now. So recently, they came to us. They liked what we do. Um, they came to us. They helped sponsor. They gave us some money to put on more product. In return, we then pushed them out. For example, right now, if you go to Figaretti's and you mention the Pine Room, you can buy two entrees and get a free appetizer. So that, that's an example of kind of how we work with other companies and how we're able to elaborate on that. Yes, sir. What are your college football locks of the week? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go Mountaineers. All right, we have time for one more question so we can get on with our next presenter. We have one over there that's been waiting. My one? Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so I know you guys have touched on it, um, but I just wanted to know a little bit more about what you have done for the community so far and what your plans are for the future. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, great question. Um, I, I, think, uh, <laughs> I think something that's uh, pretty cool is we're all from here. Um, local high school, university, you name it. So uh, recently we, we had the chance to go and host uh, multiple high school shows. So uh, the, the, the high school's around here. So Wheeling Park, Lindsley, Wheeling Central. We brought everybody together, did big shows, bringing the community together. We do big live shows where we get restaurant owners, people that uh, have made a difference in this community. And uh, we do everything we can to give back, man. So uh, we're excited. Jump, you wanna, well, you got anything else? Oh boy, now how do I follow that up? Uh, yeah, we're just trying to do the most we can to highlight some stuff around the area. I know that uh, sometimes people around Wheeling give it a lot of flack for what it is. But I, I have a deep-seated respect for this place. Um, I, I, I've grown up here. Uh, I've experienced my whole life here. Um, I've, I've built th this from the ground up. And if we can give back to a community that has given so much to us and given to every guy that's a part of our uh, business, it, it'll just mean the world to us. So, yeah, that's, that's all I got. All right, let's give them a round of applause. And then um, these guys will be hanging around all night. So if you didn't get a chance to get your question answered, you can grab one of them. All right, let's move on to our next presenter. We will be um, bringing up Miss Carrie Dawson. She is the owner and maker behind Morning Light Studio. Thank you. 
have mugs that were just thrown. I have mugs that are blazing. I do other items as well. But right now, that just seems to be the object my hands want to make. That's it. Once we moved out here to the farm, I just said, now is the time. My husband is a really good supporter. Now I'm here, and it's been about a full year that I've been actually full time. I started off kind of slow. And now I'm a full time daughter. Good evening, I'm Carrie, and I am so grateful to Wheeling Heritage for hosting this event, and I'm also so grateful to be here today in front of you all because you've all gathered here to support small businesses in our community. My husband's family is from Wheeling, and for nearly 10 years, we drove to Wheeling from Charleston almost every month until we decided to move here in 2017 to have and raise our daughter. I am a big fan of kindness, and I find that there is so much kindness here in the city of Wheeling, and it's not called the friendly city for no reason. My family has laid our roots way out Big Wheeling Creek, and we have a big farm, I have a dirty basement studio, and I hope to stay in this area for the rest of my life. I have lived in West Virginia for my entire life, and I'm honored that I can represent Wheeling, West Virginia as a ceramicist and artist. I started taking classes in 2009 and um, at a studio called Capital Clay Arts in South Charleston, West Virginia. There was a couple who had moved away and came back to West Virginia to start a pottery studio, and I'm so grateful to them for doing that because it changed the path of my life forever. Since that first class in 2009, I have dreamed and schemed and done everything I could think of to build a life in which I am a full-time ceramicist. However, um, after we moved and I had a baby, there was quite a long time there where the time to do pottery and get my hands muddy and clay just didn't present itself. And I told myself that just thinking about what I wanted to do was enough movement forward to keep me going. And so I did a lot of planning and a lot of thinking and a lot of drawing in my spare time. And then I eventually ordered a small kiln. Since ordering that kiln, I have had the opportunity to pursue being a potter full time. It's a dream come true, really. I work a lot of hours. And crazy enough, I am just as excited, if not more excited, about pottery than I've ever been in my life. There's always something to learn. And I have been able to immerse myself in a way that's improved my skills. I'm inspired by nature. I feel as if, I tell this to people a lot, you can look at the mugs I've created. If you didn't get a chance, there are some out in the lobby. You can look at my mugs and know I'm from West Virginia. I cre art, create art with black bears, birds, flowers, things that bring me joy, and things that I hope bring joy to the people who use my functional art. Um, with social media and the help of the internet, I am able to reach the entire nation, and I've had a lot of success with my online sales, and I'm very excited that I am able to represent our state and send mugs to homes all over the country. Lately, I have been feeling truly like the sky is the limit, but in reality, my kiln is my limit, and that's why I'm here today. Every piece of pottery is fired twice for approximately 11 to 13 hours each time. That is a lot of time in the kiln. My current kiln holds a maximum of 20 mugs, sometimes fewer if they're smaller. And because I have to plan for so many firings, it affects my flow of work, and I'd be able to produce more if I'm not planning around my work, my work schedule around my kiln firing schedule. Also, while it may take more energy to warm a larger kiln, I'll be firing it less, oft less often, which will hopefully save some energy usage. A larger kiln will enable me to make larger pieces like planters and large platters, and I'll be able to save money for other items I need, like a kiln, like a slab roller and a... Um, like a slab roller and an extruder. So please vote for me today. Thank you for supporting the arts and helping me to get a larger kiln so that I can expand my business. Stick around. 
All right, it's question time. Raise your hand if you have a question and look for one of our volunteer runners. Looks like we have one over here. Can I buy your pottery anywhere here in Wheeling? Yeah. Yes, I am going to be at Ogilvy Fest next weekend and I have signed up to do the handmade holiday. That'll be December 3rd. Um, they haven't announced who will be in there, I'm hoping. <laughs> and also, um, you know, I'd love to sell here at the Artisan Center as well, so that's a possible thing in the future too. All right, any other questions? mentioned shipping to other states. Can you give an example of how you also represent in West Virginia, maybe in some publications, or how have you kind of showcased us, West Virginia? Right. I am, with social media, like I said, I am able to reach people throughout the country, and it's been really exciting because when I've had shop updates online, I've had people setting alarms and emailing me, and I've been selling out right away. And I'm selling to people all over the country. I wish I would have counted up how many different states I've mailed my mugs to, um, but it's more than half of them over the last year, at least 25 or 26 states. And um, also, I was recently in, like, in the Weston Democrat. I sold at the Lewisburg Jubilee, and I got a feature in that paper. And it's just really exciting to represent West Virginia as an artist and show the whole country that we can represent the arts and that there are ceramicists here that are doing exciting new things. Thank you for that question. What other questions do we have? We have time for a couple more. I don't know. <laughs> he asked if my ambition is to have a storefront. And I'm not sure if that's the best way for my time. Um, before the bell ring, I, did, I was going to say that I do plan, I would love to host small classes. I would really like to work with teenagers in the community because I feel like if I had found clay at a younger age, um, it just would have done, made a world of difference for me. Um, that's the art that I just feel like makes me me. And if I could let other younger people express, especially teenagers that have such a rough time these days, get their hands in clay, I think that would be a really great way to contribute to the community. All right. Oh, we have, oh, we're, uh, maybe you saw another one. Since most of us don't know how much a kiln costs, could you just give us an idea of approximately if you were to win, where would those Yeah, it would go take to? every dollar I'd win about. I'd, <laughs> the one that I have in my cart right now with the kiln shelf and the vent, because my clay has specs, which has manganese, and it needs to be vented, um, is around $5,500 plus shipping. All right, thank you so much, Carrie. Let's give her another round of applause. Right, well, if you've been down Market Street lately, you might have seen a sign in the window for a new Belgian waffle shop coming, and tonight you'll get to meet the lady behind the business, Miss Tara Cabasco from the Belgian Waffle Company. Hey, 
I'm Tara Cabasco. I'm also known as the Waffle Lady. <laughs> I've gotten that nickname as I've been trying to develop this business for about a year now. So you guys got to get a glimpse of how the idea came about for the Belgian Waffle Shop. And um, I mean, we did, we thought forever of how we could come up with something and, and, and bring life back. So, um, you know, one day he was making us the Belgian waffles with the ice cream and the salted butter and it just all worked really well. And I was like, I knew that's what we had to do. And so here we are and that's what we're doing. And has, we're bringing a real traditional Belgian waffle I wonder how many people have actually had a traditional Belgian waffle. It's probably not many, but if you had, that's great. But because it's a traditional Belgian waffle before ice cream cones were invented, they used the Belgian waffle for you to hold the ice cream in the deep pockets, as you can see in here. I don't know if you can see really well, but that deep pockets held all that creaminess from the ice cream. And the traditional way as well is with berries. And so, of course, we had to bring a strawberry and cream waffle to the, um, to the shop in honor of it. And there's, there's four different types of uh, waffles, and Belgian being one of the, my favorites, actually, because of the deep pockets. And what makes our waffles unique is we use all natural and organic products. And it's clean, and we make it from scratch. As, as well as um, we use real imported Belgian sugar, and that Belgian sugar is what brings that waffle together. And I don't think many people have gotten to experience Belgian sh pearl sugar, but if you got to eat my cookie today, you got to get a little taste of it because it's really light and it, the flavor just pops in your mouth and it's the crunch and the sweetness of it and it's not too overpowering, it's just enough. So, um, yeah. It, when you um, bite into it, it's just, it's delicious, especially when it's warm. And our signature is actually using the salted butter with the waffle, because it balances out all the sweetness. Um, and we've been building this shop from the ground up, so we've had it completely renovated from top to bottom. And Wheeling is, it is, it's such home. And when you come to our waffle shop, you get an experience. Not only is it full of colors and it's vibrant and it's exciting, but we do everything in front of you. So you get to watch the waffle being made from start to finish. You get to have an experience with your family. You get to make memories with your, your children. Take time away from technology and, and have some peace and have some vibrancy and make memories that will last a lifetime as well. So um, thank you. All right, if you're not too hungry, who has some questions for Tara? Nobody? Oh, yeah. We have one up here. Rabbi wants to know if you're open now. No, Rabbi, but hopefully I will be able to open up sh soon. Hopefully. I hope to open up soon. I just have to get that big equipment out the way, and once I do, I'll be able to serve the community with no problem. Do you have any other questions on this side of the room? So is, it, is the, the, the funds from tonight enough to fund the equipment? It is. It actually covers it, and I could have a little bit left over to cover some additional equipment as well. So my ice cream chest is about 2100 and the double door fridge, it is, it's about 2500 so it's about $4,600 um, in funding that I need to be able to purchase this equipment. Uh, where are you located? I'm sorry. Where are you going to be located or where is your shop now? I, yeah, it's at 1209 Market Street. It's right across the street from the McClure Hotel. It's actually right in between of the Shea Rose Sobri and Jackson Hewitt Tax Building. So we're, we're really on a great, in a great area. One question there in the back. Okay, yes. Um, what, I mean, we know Wheeling is known for being home to the area and bringing so much excitement. What's so unique that you're bringing compared to everybody else here? What's so unique about these waffles, and I mean, other than them being Belgian waffles, Angie said you built, the, built it from the ground up. What mm -hmm. did, I mean, I've been in it, but I'm sure nobody else has been in it. 
You yeah. know what I mean? But yeah, that's that's a great question. So it's five different flavors, and I have the menu out front there. But I serve obviously the traditional vanilla bean waffle with the with the pearl sugar. I will be soon to make you one. I promise. <laughs> so, but it's um, Belgian waffles are known for the deep pockets. You, and, and that's what makes the Belgian waffle. But what makes ours unique is that we infuse it, all five of them, with their unique flavor. And it's all organic and, and infused with natural flavor. So you're not getting anything artificial. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it, I think so. Did I answer that fully? Okay. All right, let's give a round of applause for Tara. <laughs> Okay, so if you're familiar with the Belgian Waffle Shop, where that's located, right next door is Shea Rose Soapery, and that will be our last presenter of the evening, Miss Patricia. Hello, guys. My name is Patricia Smith, and I'm the owner of Shea Rose Soapery. I create bath and body products and some aromatherapy products for the home. Everything is handcrafted in store, and I use as close to natural products as possible. I don't cut your corners here, and I try to make the prices as reasonable as possible. I will also have classes coming up to teach y'all how to make the different products. I first started this in 2017. I got the ingredients, got a recipe off the internet, and I started creating them myself, which was a disaster in the beginning. <laughs> But I experimented through that time. I would give out samples and get feedback of what I can improve on. In 2020, I got my LLC and I sold online. That's when I started my website during the pandemic. So when everything had been back up, that's when I moved into a brick and mortar store, which was in June of 2022. And here I am today. The reason why I wanted to start the business here in Willing is because of the close-knit feel of the community. Everybody is so supportive of each other. They're willing to give a helping hand. And I just, I wanted to make my products available and I wanted to help them in different ways. My journey began in 2017, like I said in the video. My children introduced me to bath bombs, and I thought they were so neat. So I decided to try to make them myself. <laughs> and they fell apart, and they were a mess, but I kept going. Um, I used to watch YouTube, so from the bath bomb videos went to soaping videos. So I watched some of those, and that's how I got into soaping. I thought they were really neat, and I was working with um, the, nat get closer, get closer. the natural ingredients to um, create the soups. The recipes, at first, you know, they were terrible. I'm not going to lie, <laughs> but as time went on, and I gave out samples to people, I started getting feedback on what I could improve on, and I did just that. So. Um, I started selling in 2020 online during the pandemic. Um, I got a lot of sales and everything, and I was really happy about that. Um, I created a soap called Mother's Milk Soup, and it is made from the mother's breast milk. They bring me their breast milk frozen, and I'm able to create a soap which helps with um, eczema and also diaper rash. And it's a natural, you know, way to solve it, the problem. Um, and so in June of 2022 is when I opened my shop at 1207 Market Street. And I provide classes for the community. People come in and they're able to try the samples. I have a sample table. And that's kind of why I'm here today. I'm trying to get a sink for the shop area where when people are at the sample table, they can wash their hands afterwards and try the uh, different samples that I lay out. 
also for the classes, instead of people using one sink here, one sink there, they'll be able to use that sink in the front of the shop. Also, right now I cut my bars of soap with a one bar soap cutter, and I would like to purchase a multi-bar um, soap cutter. Um, let me see, and it will definitely help me speed up production for everything. All my ingredients are natural. I use cocoa butter, shea butter, coconut milk, goat's milk. I have vegan options. I have, um, I can customize products for people. I make more than soap also. I have bath salts, I have hand soap, I have candles, which are made from 100% soy. They don't give you a headache. <laughs> Um, I make wax melts, I sell warmers, everything is made in the shop, in the back. And um, let me see what else I want to say. <laughs> well, let me see. Okay, well, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Patricia Smith. I am the owner of Shea Rose Slippery. I am a mother of 10, and they're the reason why I'm here today. Um, <laughs> I want them to know with hard work and dedication and a positive attitude that they could do anything in life. All right, who has questions for Patricia? It looks like we already have one lined up. <laughs> Patricia, how big of a sink do you need? Uh, a portable sink. It has hot water. Where Okay. Yeah, right here. Okay, a portable sink, it has hot water and cold water um, okay, coming from it. But you have a specific sink in mind. Yes, that you yes, ma'am. How, yes. how much? It's $1,000. $1,000. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Yes. Yes. To make a bath bomb? If you come in for a class, just me making it. it don't, I usually make in bulk. So it takes me about an hour or so. It all depends. Any other questions? I've got one. <laughs> she wanted to ask if you can have birthday parties there. Yes, yes. I, I offer birthday parties. Um, I actually just had a class with the teachers at Madison School, and I took everything in. We had a ball. <laughs> we had so much fun. So I do come to you if you need me to. Um, and not just bath bombs, soaping, and a bunch of different other things. You'll have to come into the shop to see everything, to see all the products that I make. And I love this. This is my heart and soul. I really enjoy what I do. Uh, the soap powder? Oh, it's about $200 for the uh, multi-bar soap cutter, stainless steel. Mm -hmm. okay, one more back there. What sense do you have for your different soaps? Oh my, what scent don't I have is the question. I have so many, so many. I usually tell people, you let me know what scent you're looking for because I have I have so many, and I just make them as time go on, and then when people come in, if they have a special request, like, hey, could you make this? Could you make that? I'll make it for them. What's your most popular scent? Okay, my most popular scent is, I think it's Pinkberry Mimosa. Yeah, which, <laughs> Pinkberry Mimosa, but it's, uh, yeah, I'm sold out of that one. <laughs> All right, we have one more over there. Okay. Do you have a men's product line, or do you plan to have one? Can you repeat that? Men's product line? Oh, yes. I make beard oil. I make men's soap and different things like that. And I will be adding more products, such as beard balm and different things. I formulate all my recipes, so it takes time, because I have to research every single ingredient. All right. Good job. Okay. How about it? Another round of applause for Patricia and all of our presenters tonight. It truly takes so much bravery to get up in front of a room full of strangers and friends to talk about what you're most passionate about and sharing your big dreams with everyone. So um, really, there's, um, 
this is one of my favorite events because of that. It's so great to see everyone. So now is the time where you get to cast your vote, fill out your ballot. You can drop it out here. We'll keep voting open online for the next 15 minutes and everything will close. So if you're tuning in from home, please do that now. And then once we collect all the votes, we will um, turn it over to community events or community announcements. So there's still time to sign up if you're interested in that. Thanks. Hello? Hey. How are you? <laughs> Thanks. Hey, for those of you who don't know, my name is Ron Scott. I am a member of the Show of Hands Committee and proud employee of the YWCA of Wheeling. Now, what we do with this section of the evening is we like to talk about our community events. And uh, first thing we're going to do is get an update from our past winner. So if we have a rep from Table 304, if you could come up and let us know how things have been since you've won. Give it up, Table 304. This is so awesome seeing how many people came out. I just want to say as a, a small business owner uh, in downtown Wheeling, just how important it is that you guys show up like this. It means a ton to everybody um, that's involved. So uh, just thanks for coming. So yeah, I won last year. We were super excited. Um, I, for those of you who don't know, I have, my name is Libby Gramby. I have um, table 304, and we're just in the Flatiron Building, just at the under, other end of this block. Um, and we have a full service coffee shop and I make charcuterie boards, grazing boards um, in all sizes. So I do big caterings for parties and showers and then we have smaller options for at home parties and then individual servings and things and sandwiches and lunches that you can come pick up in the shop. So stop in sometime for coffee and um, it'd, be, it'd be nice to see you. So last year we won. We started a hashtag save the cheese spread campaign because we make this um, Jarlsberg cheese spread and a smoked Gouda cheese spread that's really popular. And I was making it in my little Cuisinart from my house. Um, we made over 500 pounds of it in my little tiny Cuisinart um, from my kitchen. So we started it to, uh, we entered to get a commercial grade cheese shredder. Um, and we did purchase that, it was $2,500. We were super excited and it's a beast. It's shredding cheese like crazy for you guys to keep up with all the football parties and the Jarlsberg addicts that we have here in town. So um, it's, it's, been a, it's been so wonderful for us. It's streamlined um, our cheese making, makes everything so much faster for us, it gives us more time to do other things uh, and offer other things. Um, and then in thinking about what to do with the rest of the money, I was trying to be very intentional about how to use it because how often do you get um, an amount of money like that? And we were trying to think of like, what little this and little that do we want to get? And then it hit me that we actually needed another commercial um, refrigerator. So we actually were able to purchase another full-size commercial refrigerator with um, the rest of that money. And then, uh, which is going to be a godsend during the holidays because we always run out of space as we make boards and then have to store them, wait for pickup and things. So it's going to be so great. Um, and then during that whole process, our ice machine broke. And you can't have a coffee shop without an ice machine. So um, the rest of the money plus an extra couple hundred dollars, because I think it was like $700 to fix the new compressor and all that. So it was kind of perfect timing, but kind of a bummer at the same time, you know? One of those like, you're glad you have the money, but you wish you didn't have to spend it on that kind of thing. So it was, it was, um, it was just such a help to our small business um, to have won this. And I just really hope that for that it, it makes it, I hope you know that it's gonna make a huge difference for whoever wins tonight. So I just wanna say thank you guys for coming out and um, supporting small businesses like this and supporting Wheeling Heritage because they're a real gem here in Wheeling that a lot of people don't know about. So thanks for coming out. All right, give it up one more time for table 304. All right. All right. 
For those of you that don't know, the community announcements is when anybody in the audience can pay about $5. You come up and you get to announce whatever project you have coming up, something you just want to announce, special events, whatever you want. So these are the list of the people that paid to get up. And it isn't too late. Just give me a signal if you got five bucks and something to say. All right? So first up, we're going to bring up Valerie Pico and uh, the announcement about the event she wants to talk about. Here you go. All right, calling all entrepreneurs. I have an exciting opportunity for you. Um, so if you own a business or you've ever dreamed of own, owning a business, I run a program called Co-Starters. I'm with RED, the Regional Economic Development Partnership, um, and we have a program called Co-Starters. It's been around in Wheeling for about five years, and we have lots of former Co-Starter participants in the room. If you guys wouldn't mind raising your hand, I think I saw at least half a dozen all right, good, I see some hands. Libby's one of them, who we just heard from. Um, so Co-Starters is a 10-week program, and you can really be at any stage of your business. If you have a concept for a new business, or if you've been in business for a while, and you are just trying to figure out how you can kind of introduce some new products or services, or um, kind of reshape your, your vision to, to be more financially stable, really, um, Co-Starters is for you. So it's a 10-week class that takes you through various topics, including, um, you know, show me the money, um, marketing, uh, budgeting, um, pricing, understanding your customer needs, and even kind of understanding yourself and how much you have time, how much time you have to take things on. So it's kind of self-reflective as well. At the end of the program, you have a business plan ready to go, and you also have a room full of people cheering you on. So it's a wonderful networking opportunity with other like-minded entrepreneurs. Um, and then we even have a little pitch competition, not a competition, but we have a, a, a pitch night, our celebration night, where you have the opportunity to get up and practice in front of the room, kind of make the pitch for your business too. We bring in guest speakers every week um, that come from various backgrounds and local businesses to kind of share their experience as an entrepreneur, the struggles that they faced, and um, kind of their areas of expertise. So it starts tomorrow night, and we have a few more spots in the program if you might be interested. I'll be hanging out a little bit, um, but you can also visit the website to learn more and find my information. It is uh, red, R E D P dot org slash co-starters. Um, and then my email address, if you want to reach out, is vpiko at redp.org. But we'd love to have you. Thanks. Next up is another co-starters graduate, too. They're everywhere. One more time for Valerie. All right. Give it up. <laughs> give it up. And the last of our community announcements uh, is Libby Horsek from Coffee and Tech. Give it up for Libby. <laughs> um, hi, everybody. Um, so I'm a software engineer, a software uh, developer. And um, during the pandemic, my workplace went remote and then never went back to the office. So I got to move back here to Wheeling at, back in like 2020. And I did co-starters with, uh, with Valerie, and it was an amazing experience, so definitely check, check that out. Um, but the thing that I'm talking about today is that one of the things that I do miss about New York City and other places is that they have like really active tech communities. There's like events, meetups, talks that you can go to and like kind of level up your skills. And that was something that it seemed like Wheeling was missing so I decided to create this event called Coffee and Tech, where people can, who are in, in the technical industry, who are tech entrepreneurs, um, or just like students or people who are interested in making that career change, um, can come and talk about their ideas and struggles. <laughs> um, so that's gonna be Tuesday mornings at Mugshots in downtown Wheeling. And if you're interested, I've got a ton of flyers here with more information and a website you can go to. Um, so just uh, let me know. <laughs> Thanks. All right, 
I'm back. Thank you so much for everyone who made a community announcement. Thank you for being patient. And a special thank you to everyone live streaming from home um, for being very patient with us through some of the tech issues. We counted your votes, um, and you should see some emails from me. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, this is one of the largest pots that we've had in a while. Um, the winner will be taking home $6,455 tonight. And that's all because of you and our amazing, amazing sponsors. So give yourselves a round of applause and let's bring up our four contestants. We'll have you all line up out here. You guys all did such a great job tonight. And just a reminder to everyone here, remember to support these people in all of the ways that you can, whether it's listening to their podcast, visiting their shop, sharing their stuff online, buying a piece of ceramic pottery from your local um, arts show that Carrie's participating in. Just make sure that you're supporting these people because they're all doing such great things in our community in so many different ways. But there can only be one winner tonight. And the winner is the Pine Room Podcast. <laughs> I think the whole, pine, pine, the whole podcast team's here, so why don't you all come on up? Hey, real quick for uh, anybody that's still here, I just want to send a uh, thank you to everybody that came for us or, or just came and, and, and whatever. Uh, I really don't really, I don't really know what to say. Uh, I don't really know what to say, but I just want to say thank you. Uh, it means the world. Uh, I know that some might not understand what this is, uh, but a lot of work goes into it. Uh, I've, we've spent a lot of, uh, a lot of hard uh, time blood, sweat, and tears trying to get all this thing, uh, get this thing off the ground. And uh, this is going to go a long way. I promise next year, if we come back here next year to, to talk, uh, I'm hoping everything goes well. And I just, I can't thank you enough. So uh, thank you guys. Uh, everyone, we want to thank you. Uh, we really appreciate everyone coming out tonight. Uh, Mom, Dad, Everyone else, thank you guys so much for everything. We're excited to give back and, and uh, keep this thing rolling. So thank you guys. Appreciate it. All right. Be sure to follow Wheeling Heritage to see what we're up to next. Um, one of the most exciting things is we're starting our own podcast. It's called Wheeling Haunts. It starts on October 3rd. And we have a quick preview that you can listen or watch um, on your way out tonight. Thanks again for coming out.
Thank you.